Hey, I'm Will Putney, and today I'm going to show you around the Control Hub plugin. I'm going to pull up a mix, show you a little bit about how Control Hub works, and give you a little glimpse into some of my presets. So today we're going to look at how I will use STL Control Hub uh, in a mix situation. What I've done is I've printed down all my multi-tracks into about 16 stems and I'm going to kind of go through each one and very quickly and efficiently dial up a mix using just the Control Hub plugin. So these are more or less raw multi-tracks from uh, my band's session from our last record and uh, I've just got kick, snare, tom, cymbals printed individually with the real sounds and samples, my room, uh, my real room and my fake room samples, bass guitar, rhythm guitars, leads, and some vocal stems. And that's it, just a blank session. And I'm only going to use Control Hub, no other third-party plugins, no analog gear, and I'm going to emulate what I normally do with my whole hybrid analog digital mix setup with all my outboard gear, with all the other plugins I use, my favorite mix stuff, some of my favorite mastering tools, and try to just get the vibe only using this Control Hub plugin. So what I've done, as you can see on the screen, I've got all of these multi-tracks going into these buses that you see in front of you. And these all go out one and two. And here's my main output. For all these people that aren't Logic users, I'm just catching up on what this looks like. Here's, my, uh, here's just a game plugin. To, to bring some of the level down. And I've got one control hub on every track and sort of a mix and a mastering control hub on my main two bus. And now I'll just go through each individual track, show you a preset that I've chosen for, to kind of get me there in a, in a mix situation and see how it all comes together. So I'll just play you a little sample of the song. Pretty standard metal tune. I know what I'm going for. Obviously, it's my band, so I kind of have an idea of what I'd want to do. I want sort of aggressive mix, a little more high end than what I'm hearing on these tracks. I want some pumping in the drums. I want the guitars to be a little more in your face. Roughly kind of have a balance set up for you to start. This is how I would normally start a mix, more or less, like the way I would lay out my buses. So I'm kind of already there, and now I'm just going to use these plugins to kind of go through show you some presets that I've chosen. So off the bat, I can tell this is sounding pretty raw, which is cool, but I would like to get some drums punchier. I'd like to get some things a little, a, uh, a little more in your face. I think I need to brighten up some stuff. So I've, I can go through my drums. What I'll usually do is I'll just kind of mute guitars, mute vocals, just listen to my drum balance first. Okay, so I know I want to use this real kick to have some, give me some real sub and some real low end. So I've chosen my kick rock preset, which was a cool emulation of what I would normally do outside the box with like a, a distressor, some EQ that fattens up my, my uh, kick drum, and it basically just gives me punchier organic kick sounds with a little more low end, some tape distortion, definitely a little more bass heavy. So A to B being the, the sounds. You can hear how the kick squeezed in a little more. It's a little punchier. It's definitely a little fatter and a little more driven. I think that's a really cool starting point. With the kick fake sample in this mix, I uh, went with my kick metal preset. because This is a metal song. I know I have a pretty standard flat basic kick sample happening right now. But I want that thing hyped more. I want to hear more high end on it. I definitely want it more compressed. So with my kick metal preset. Bringing out some compression, bringing out some of the click in the kick track. Um, and these two together. I 
are kind of getting me on my way for that. I know I'm going to want some more distortion. I'm probably going to want a little bit of reverb, but we'll get to that. It's just a starting point I was showing you my basic kick chains. So the snare, kind of in a similar place. I want punchy drums on this mix. I have a snare that's a little darker on the way in. It's tuned a little lower. Not a bad sounding drum, but I have it gated pretty tight to control some cymbal bleed. I know I want to bring out some of the sustain of the drum. Um, the, way I, the way I would approach this mix, I would use the attack of the sample for the snare to be a little more present, and I'd want to hear more natural ring of the drum. Sort of a good way to hide the fact that you're using samples in the mix because you'll get the decay of a more organic drum sound. So in here I have my snare sustain preset, which kind of has a smaller attack, a slower release, it's distorted a bit. It brings out more of the like mid-range frequencies and ring of the snare drum. So now I can hear like those overtones come up. It's obviously cued a bit to control some of it, but I think that's going to blend pretty well with an actual sample. So moving on to my snare sample, I have the snare punch preset dialed in here, and this is going to do what you think it's going to do. Here's my snare sample. Pretty dark, pretty pretty thuddy, but I think a punchy thuddy snare that's brightened up will be a good complement for this mix. And here it is, smashed into this compressor. Pretty fast release. Definitely brightened up, fattened up. Pairs well with the snare sustain preset from the real snare. And now just looking at the two. You can see we're kind of getting on our way here. Moving on to some of the tom samples and some of the real toms that I had in this mix. Let me get a little section that has some toms. Here's a roll. So my approach to this one was I was going to distort the real toms a little more on the way in. I like to drive organic toms pretty hard to again bring out the overtones, um, the natural overtones of the drums and then use samples to kind of give us more of that modern attack that you hear in metal production. So using this metal tom preset and turning up some of the turning up some of the compression with the attack down, I kind of got myself to this point. So now these are brighter. There's definitely more low end presence. There's definitely a little more attack to them. Sort of will compete with the wall of guitars and things that are to come in the mix. Going to the fake toms, I'm using the fat tom preset. That's in my drum section of this. And again, I'm doing basically the same thing. These came in very similar sounding, like the actual toms I recorded and the toms that I chose as samples. So again, it's just a little subtle bits of compression, a decent attack, more low end, a, a little bit of distortion, and uh, they didn't need too much work. So the drive, the drive, the compression, the coloration that comes in this was like a perfect thing to just round out the toms in the mix. And my shells are all in pretty good shape just from, you know, this one plugin so far. And with a moth. So I'm getting there, coming in with cymbals now. I have all my cymbals just balanced down to the this, to this stereo sim. So there's a lot of little accent cymbals. There's a lot of um, stereo image stuff. I don't really need anything over, over harsh or over hyped on the cymbal um, bus for this particular mix because these are pretty flat cymbals giving me a good dynamic picture all around. Some hat section. Yeah, so I'm not going to do any real heavy lifting with this. I think I'm just going to use my cymbal smooth preset, which just cuts a few harsh frequencies out, adds a little bit of sheen and a little bit of drive, and a, again, a tiny bit of compression.
A to Bing it, now I can heat, see the way I've dialed this. I wanted to pull some of the snare out of the overheads, probably because I was going to rely on the rooms to give me a little more of that snare in the room sort of picture. So I do have the compression dialed in a bit. Yeah, and I didn't really change the cymbal picture. I just took, pulled some of the snare out, gave them a little bit of sheen, and used the cymbal smooth preset for that. Looking at my room mics, I've got uh, my real my real rooms. For this, I'm using my room tame preset. Um, this is basically just to control some of the symbols that are in the room mics. I like to go darker on room mics usually, and I get a lot of the symbol energy from the actual symbol, symbol mics or the overheads. What's bust to this is probably mics that are a little further away from the kit, maybe on the floor, maybe behind the kit, places where the symbols aren't always ideal for a modern metal mix. So using this room tame, I'm able to sort of darken Darkens the overall picture of the drum rooms, gives me a little bit of compression, and kind of brings up some of the low end distortion and drive in this, in the, in the coloration of this channel. Um, it makes for a really cool way to slide in more rooms into a, a metal mix. Looking at my room sample now, going to turn this up a bit. Because I don't have the cymbal bleed, I can get away with a little more distortion, a little more compression. Um, I chose the room fat preset for this, which is obviously doing what it, what it says. Thickening up the room mics, adding low end, adding compression, adding some cool coloration from the gear that it was running through. Um, this is a really useful, easy way to just immediately get, you know, the picture of what I usually run my room mics through in a plugin. So I'm having a good time hearing this coming back fat like this uh, and not having it go through any gear. So combined, our room picture. Fatter snare, cymbals are nice and controlled. I've got enough low end, nothing's too overbearing. The other thing I should mention too is some of the built-in just shelving that happens are these is just like a really quick and easy way to clean up a mix. All of the, you know, respective drum and other instrument tracks that you'll see in the presets, I've kind of already dialed high pass, low pass, any of that subtle sort of stuff I would do to sort of kill un, uh, really unwanted frequencies in a, in a modern metal production. They're all here. So it's stuff I've like already forgotten about. I'm already to the end of drums and I'm hearing stuff sound pretty balanced. And there's no mud, there's no booming unwanted frequencies in the in the snare or in the toms or anything. So it's uh it's just nice to turn one plugin on and have all that taken care of for you. So already at a good spot with the drums. Time to bring in bass. This would be the next logical step in my mix. I have a pretty, pretty mid-forward bass tone for this song. I know it's something I wanted to do. I think when I tracked this particular song, um, I realized in the mix, like, hey, I think I should make the bass brighter. And I do have a, a, a bass preset called Bass Presence, which adds some of that, like, more modern 1 to 2K stuff and a little bit of high end on the bass. Gives it a little bit of subtle coloration and drive and sort of brings out more of the aggressive nature of a bass. Sometimes it's hard to dial that from a bass amp without it becoming too noisy or hissy. It gives us sometimes speaker cones, give me those frequencies I, I don't love and I like to compensate for that with a good analog EQ after the fact. And that's kind of exactly what this bass presence preset does. Which is why it's like a perfect companion for this bass tone. Yeah, so this was designed to just give you a little drive, give you a little compression, give you more bass presence. 
and uh, it's subtle enough where if you have a decent bass tone, it's sort of the perfect finishing touch. It's basically exactly the way it sounds when I do it with an EQ uh, on my console. So it's cool to it's cool to hear this working the way it should. <laughs> Cool. Rhythm guitars, kind of the same boat on this. They came in a little dark. I like the tone a lot. I like the attack of the notes. I just wish it had a little more presence. So I'm using my rhythm presence preset. This was sort of like a subtle high end hype and I brought out some of the mid range frequencies that kind of complement a more aggressive metal mix. Um, there's not too much drive. There's probably just a little bit of compression. You can hear some of the sizzle, some of that tearing high mid stuff just come up a little bit. And that's all I really wanted to do in this particular mix to sort of give the guitars a little more edge. And this is a great preset for that. Yeah, so we're almost there. At this stage in the mix, once I sort of had my main foundations balanced instrumentally, is when I like to look at my mix bus. I think getting the balance of a mix is really important. Obviously, we're a step ahead because I've sort of taken the liberty of balancing this ahead of time. But now I'm, I would be kind of at the point in a mix where I would start looking at what, what's my two bus doing? What's the compression like? What else should I be, should I be looking at a big global move now that I sort of have the foundations done? I would take a look at the two bus and kind of my main starting thing would be my mix and master chain and my mix compression. I do have a pretty intricate mastering chain that I like to set up when I know I'm, I'm going to be finishing a record from start to finish. That'll include a variety of things like, you know, summing compression, different types of EQs, some mid side treatment if necessary. There's tube compressors. So it's sort of, I sort of put the entire chain together and it all is basically emulated in here in a way where it's capturing like all of those little pieces and the general little colorations you get from them. And it just gives it to you as a starting point. So with this on and off, you can immediately hear, and I'll turn the threshold down so we can match the level a little more, but you can immediately hear low end thickening, the separation between the mid and side picture sort of changing. Things just sort of jumping out in a way where I was like honestly shocked when I heard this. Yeah, this has taken all that, all the good analog guts and low end life that come from the mastering compressor I use, some of the sub stuff that I add when I know when I know I'm going to be mastering a record that I'm mixing, and it just like already kind of carved me out like a finishing product for a modern um, metal mix and master without really having to do anything but load this. So pretty exciting. I'd probably apply just a tiny bit of limiting. So I was taking a transi or two off. So as I mix now, I would hear sort of closer to the finish line. And then I would start to design what I'd want my main bus compressor to sound like. Going over to this channel strip, which is the one before this. This is just my mix compression, which is a pretty classic combination of an Allen Smart and an SSL bus comp that's been captured really, really good in here. And A to Bing it to my actual gear was really impressive, actually, how it how it really got the guts of it and the color and sort of gave gave me the the good slap that you want out of those style of compressors. You know, they're obviously well loved things that have been emulated over time, but the way I kind of run them in parallel with sort of the different summing stages of my mix, I was very skeptical that it would translate uh, into a plug-in form. And I think this mix compression metal one does a really good job of just doing exactly that, grabbing the transients, giving it a little bit of pump, but still letting it be controllable. The ability to 
have a mix knob um, within this plugin is super useful too because I can really dial it in the way I would use it in the summing stages of my console. So with it on and off. I mean, that's exactly what I want. That's the glue, that's like the low end pumping a bit, the kick coming through, the classic like rock metal vibe of an SSL compressor. And uh, yeah, I think this mix compression uh, particular preset for this like really nails basically exactly what I did in the mix for this for this song. So the combination of these two in tandem, this, this mix compressor kind of going into my mastering chain is getting me really close to exactly what I would be doing in real life. I mean, the difference when it's off is like night and day. It's crazy. This is literally a just years of collections of gear in two plugins right here. Yeah, I've listened to this a few times, dialing this mix, and it still blows my mind when <laughs> those go off. Um, otherwise, there's a couple other just little details I would look at. Obviously, leads are very subjective. I've sort of dialed leads as I track through this record pretty meticulously, and I know it just needed some finishing touches. So I have, you know, here's one example. <laughs> just some wet ambient layer that happened to be in this song. It's already got the effects on it, so I'm not gonna dig too deep into that. But what I do like to do on a lead bus in a scenario where I kind of have finished product, printed good sounding guitars, is I just like to sort of hype a little bit of the mid range and give it some air band style EQ, which is really useful to help it cut through a mix. There's obviously a lot of things competing in the upper frequencies in metal mixes, so I use sort of the airband presence as a, as a bit of a trick, and this this lead hype preset does a really good job at that. And I actually just blended it in a little bit. If you can see, there's like a global blend knob here too. I'll even I'll pull it down and bring it up, and you can just hear sort of that air come into it. Yeah, usually I'll take it to a point where I'm like, oh, that is that too much, and then I'll hear it in context in a song. Something subtle, but it just gave an already decent sounding guitar tone and effect, just a little bit more presence to help cut through some of this mix. And I think that was, um, that's all that really needed. So it was very simple to just help improve a track with a, with a little easy preset. I haven't looked at any additional bus stuff. Obviously, this is a very simple mix. This would go, this could go forever, you know, but um, I know commonly distortion and reverbs are at least everybody's sort of main things like uh, that they'll wind up doing when they're when they're working on drums in a mix. So I I do want to look at some of that too to, before I call this instrumental like done. I've um, bussed all my kick and snare and toms and rooms to four independent buses where I've dialed in some of my distortion presets. So we can go through those. Turning on this bus 129 here. This is my kick distortion. Obviously, this is a metal mix. I keep talking about presence, but I want presence in anything that I'm going to distort probably at this point, this stage of a mix. So I'm using this kick distortion presence preset, which adds a lot of gain and a lot of saturated high end. By itself, it's not a super flattering tone. You know, you, you can hear we're obviously pushing this kick to a decent amount, but it is adding a cool sort of clicky top end thing that when I blend in with the regular kicks, it gives me a little extra character to the drum. It feels a little less sterile. There's just a little bit more life to the kick drum now with some of this distortion in there. And I kind of approach that in a similar way with the snare and the toms. I know the snare one, I was able to get away with 
pushing some more low end in because it's not a sub heavy instrument I can get away with a little more of that blended in without sort of breaking up the tightness of the mix so for the snare one I use my distortion thickener preset so here's our snare yeah and on this you can see a good amount of compression a good amount of this tape saturation and, and a little more bass to the EQ That sort of just gave it some low mid, you know, depth and presence in the mix, which um, I felt like it probably needed at this stage. So this so was a, just a simple snare dis distortion tool. Tom's probably looking at a, a pretty similar thing. I used my top and bottom preset for that, which is just giving me some subs, some high end, probably distorting the toms to a point where they're not so flattering on their own, but in the context of a mix this top and bottom uh, preset can be really cool at, at adding some character to the drums. Yeah, I can hear that low, it's like pretty pushed. I have this like pretty pinned here, but just putting a little bit of that in helps those toms cut through a little bit. sound a little more complete and full like that and uh, in a similar vibe the room distortion fat preset is giving me exactly what you think it is let me turn that bus on this is my current bus room room tone and then with it on crunched up tape saturation Actually, a little more high end. I might have dialed up some of the treble on this. Yeah, so just again, another little character enhancement trick with these distortion buses. And then the last thing, probably before I could call the drums done here, is just taking a look at reverb. Obviously, a crucial part of dialing a drum mix. So I just pulled up a kick snare and tom reverbs that I thought helped complement what I have going on here. Looking at the kick verb. Reverb bus kick presence. So this is a bright reverb that's very short. Turn it up a little. You know, in a metal mix, there's a lot of fast kick drums. You can't really get away with a lot of long reverb. In, in situations like this. So I'm using reverb in this sense to just bring out some of the audible tail end of the high end of the kick drum. Hearing that with the kick. It's just giving me a subtle little decay, a little bit of realism to it. And I think it helps kind of place it in the stereo field a little bit with just a little bit of stereo because my kick is obviously very mono in this mix. Looking at the snare, I'll turn this bus on. I have the room splat preset, which is just sort of a short room that has a bit of mid-range bouncing around. It's kind of doing a similar thing the same way you would use reverb on the kick, just looking at filling in frequencies. This is probably more mid-range focused. Using this cool LA room that, that came in this, that's been tweaked a little bit, but I'm just looking for a short, splatty room sound, help complement sort of the dryness of the snare and the snare sample. Yeah, the reverbs in this are great. The, all of the short rooms in that LA pack are um, super usable. Really cool hall ones. I think on the toms, we're looking at a bit more of a, of a hall reverb. 
which is kind of my go-to for these. I have short tom depth on here. Oh, it is actually a room. Look at me. This is the heaven reverb selection. Yeah, so this is dialed to just help extend some of the toms in the stereo picture. It's a pretty wide reverb. Not too beefy, like as far as overly done with sub or anything. It's just a tweaked out, very similar to the reverb I've been using in my mixes lately to, to kind of apply to toms to give them just a little bit of depth. Yeah, just hearing it on and off. It's just kind of adding a, a bit of extra decay, making them a little less stiff. Burst it off. So there's kind of our mix. Sounding very close to the record already. It's pretty insane. And then, last but not least, once I have an instrumental, obviously I like to look at bringing vocals in. I've already committed to all my compression and distortion on the way in for this particular session. So I'm treating this vocal bus as sort of just the finishing touches. But if you go into my pack, there are very meticulously recreated versions of exactly what my vocal chain sound like for guys who scream, for singing vocals, the way I would treat harmonies and overdubs. It could be its own section. We could talk all day about it, but they're all very clearly labeled in there. So I'd encourage you to have fun playing with the, the presets that are already dialed for individual vocals. I use my main screen vocal one to sort of apply some of the character to this. It's some sort of like doing it times two here, but I use the mix knob to just bring a little bit more of it in. This is a really good representation of the compression and EQ that I would use to record a screaming vocal. It's, it's a Distressor 1176, my Neve Pre, uh, giving it a little drive, plus there's some additional EQ on it and a bit of love from the plugins on the way in, and it gives me like a pretty finished tone. And dealing with a vocal bus where it's like already kind of done, I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll just apply a little bit of it, get some of that high-end hype, get some of that compression in, a little bit of that drive, and it'll sort of Fin put the finishing touches on bus style in this particular mix. So you could hear I'm bringing up some drive, I'm bringing up a little bit of the high-end presence, and I've cut out a few what seem to be like ouchy high mid frequencies. I found us in another time, raw It's almost acting as a de-esser in a way the, way, the way I have it set. And it's just a great finisher, blending it a little bit just to help me sort of complete this already decent sounding vocal for me. I found us in another Yeah, got a good amount of air to it now. Sits in good with the guitars and pretty happy with this. With what, 20, 22 plugins. This mix probably had significantly more than this uh, when I actually did it. So uh, overall, this didn't take very long and I have a really good, great starting point. Probably could mix a whole record using just this plugin. And it's very, very, very close to sounding exactly like it does when it runs through all my gear in the studio. Like, it kind of blows my mind hearing this stuff unprocessed and then processed. This is where we started. I found us in another time. Scar, a former shell. And this is where we're ending up. I found us in another
I mean, that's a super powerful plugin. So I'm very happy to be a part of this and I was happy to contribute all these presets and help make this artist's pack. And uh, yeah, I'd encourage you to check this out. If you like anything I do, I think you're really gonna enjoy what I've put into this plugin and what kind of great results you can get from it.